Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Today is Thursday, October the 15th. And I wanted to come to you with Dawn's letter because it has part two. But I want to uh, remind you that the second part I'm going to do is part two of two. And there is one little part in there that I don't agree with. But that's okay. Because when it's coming from us, sometimes our understanding is not perfected in all things. It will be when we get to heaven, but not until. So I'll go over that when I'm done reading it. It's just a small thing, I believe. But I want to read uh, Small Straws in a Soft Wind Excuse me, by Marcia Burns. Do not forget to include me in every area of your life and ask me for help. I am not a silent partner. I will speak to you in a still small voice when you must position yourself to hear. Internally, you must shut down the fear, worry, and other loud voices that would lead you astray. This will depend on your level of sensitivity to my spirit, which must be developed in quietness as you seek. That's kind of what I was saying yesterday about how the distractions in our life when we're trying to pray can cause us to, if I remember right, I went over this, about distractions. You need to try to find a quiet place. You're... It'd be so nice if everybody could have their own little prayer closet. Whether it's a whole room, a library in a big house, or an actual big closet that you could clean out and put a, uh, maybe a beanbag chair. You know those big old beanbags? They used to be popular. I don't know if you can still buy them. But something that you can get comfortable in or kneel on or whatever you want in there. Just be careful with candles if you're going to use a candle for a light. Okay, so quietness is what he's saying. It must be developed in quietness as you seek. John fifteen seven. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. Now, this is the second part of the trumpet is sounding. October 12, 2020, 10.13 p.m. Warriors for God received this or wrote this down, whatever, perhaps with the help of the Holy Spirit. Matthew 7.19 says, Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. If you allow yourself to be consumed by him, that would be Jesus, then you must produce fruit because he is pruning you. The axe is being laid to the root of the tree in your life by the fiery trials which are to try you and your, your dead fruitless branches are being cut down and thrown into the fire. Your dead fruitless branches. Now, how could we equate that? The things in our life that we do are being taken away and thrown into the fire. 
That's like a metaphorical fire. I would say that. The trumpet in Zion was blown for you a long time ago. You could not endure. You could not stand in the day of the Lord. Yeah. Long time ago, I wouldn't have stood in the day of the Lord. I wouldn't have been ready. Oh, praise God for his grace and mercy. You were tried and found wanting. You didn't stand when he appeared to you. You bowed and worshipped at his feet. And the many hardships and trials you endured, you knew were for the perfecting of your belief. And now you must finish the race. Oh, I can just see that in my own life. Can you, brothers and sisters in Christ? I wasn't living exactly right for sure but when I was in church at the churches where the Holy Spirit was welcome and and the Spirit was truly there not just in people but in the atmosphere I would fall on my face or at least get on my knees and bow down and I had to just do that I couldn't stand there anymore and pray I had to get down and usually bald my head off not always sometimes I just weep wept and didn't always know why but the Lord ended up teaching me and showing me. I hope you all are getting something out of this. You must press on toward the goal to win the prize, to attain to the whole measure of the fullness of the stature of Christ. That comes from Ephesians 4.13. You must be a vessel made holy and useful to the master to do any good work, having been consumed by a zeal for God, no longer being cold or lukewarm for God, but hot. You must have your lamps burning and awaken yourself no longer part of the ten sleeping virgins of Matthew 25, and be eagerly awaiting your master. Now this is the part I was talking about. Because that parable clearly shows they all got sleepy and slept, because in the natural, we need sleep. But when they called, the, the master's coming, the master's coming, they all woke up. They all went to trim their lamps. And five were found lacking. But five had plenty because they brought extra. The others found their lamps going out. And we're told, go buy for yourself. We don't have enough for me and you too. And you know what happened. They didn't get back in time. The door had been shut. And the master said, truly, I don't know you. That must have been very hard. I mean, if that's a parable. Didn't really happen. But it will. It will. There are some spirit-filled Christians who will be honestly believing they're going in the first rapture. 
First of all, they might not know there's two raptures. So whatever rapture there is, they believe they're in it. But they're found lacking because they, they were born again, so they have the gift of the Holy Spirit but maybe weren't baptized in the Holy Spirit. But they were waiting. They were waiting. They were cleaning up their act. They had their garment cleaned by repentance and stopping all sin, you know, the lifestyle sin, Repenting of the little accidental ones that we do every day. But did not want to be, or did not believe they needed to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. I don't understand that. In these days, you pretty much have to just pray for it. It says here, uh, your groom now being a... Bro uh, oh, that was your master. Okay. Sleeping virgins of Matthew 25 and be eagerly awaiting your master your groom now being a bride ready with no other lovers faithful dedicated in love full of passion and waiting for that day to be united with your groom that part is excellent that describes the bride of Christ perfectly or to be ready with no other lovers, faithful, dedicated, in love, full of passion, and waiting for that day to be united with your groom. You must be that bride without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless and ready for his appearing. Let the preparation of the wedding begin. That was the end of that. But they added uh, two scriptures. 1 Corinthians 3, 13-15 says, Let me check my position. Yeah, that's okay. I'm going to drop it down. Okay. Their work will be shown for what it is. Because the day will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire. And the fire will test the quality of each person's work. Ignore that pretty sound in the background. That's just my phone. If what has been built survives... The builder will receive a reward. If it is burned up, the builder will suffer loss. I don't know what version this is. Anyway, if it is burned up, the builder will suffer loss, but yet will be saved, even though only as one escaping through the flames. Zechariah 13.9 This third I will put into the fire. I will refine them like silver and test them like gold. They will call on my name and I will answer them. I will say they are my people and they will say, the Lord is our God. Amen. The Lord is our God. Okay. Let's see.
I'm just, this last one might be. Oh, this is a good one too. Yeah, I didn't even read the ones in the green box. I'll go ahead and share this one from Bev Robinson. My will brings blessings even at times when it doesn't appear to be that way, especially if it is in the middle of what is happening. Wait. Wait on me. Wait until the end of what is happening. Then you will see blessings overtake blessings. Let your mind rest on the blessings to come. Not on the hardships that are happening right now. Keep yourself focused. Let the fruit of the self-control reign. I'm sorry. Let the fruit of self-control reign. Don't allow self-pity into your mind. Yeah, that starts a whole ball of wax of depression when you start feeling sorry for yourself because of what you lost rather than what you still have. Galatians 5, 22-23 this is the MLB. I don't know what that is, but that's the version. But the Spirit's fruition is love, joy, peace, forbearance, that's patience, kindness, generosity, or goodness, fidelity, gentleness, self-control. Now, fidelity is being faithful. Yeah, I guess that could be faithful. Faithful? You're being faithful to your partner when you are you have fidelity. So I guess you could have fidelity toward God being faithful. Gentleness and self-control. There is no law against these. I always thought it weird that that was in there. Against such is no law, I think is how King James puts it. I just thought that was odd to add that there. I would have said something else. <laughs> anyway, that's what's in the Word of God. And that was put up by Bev Robinson. She received that word. Um, I should have read the whole thing. I was just thought, oh, I'm going to share this part too here. I'll share this last one for October 15th. My son was born a man, lived, was crucified, defeated death and hell, and lives today with me. There is a segment of my kingdom for which you have yearned, but has seemed to be just out of reach, I say to you. That part of my kingdom is yours, just as much as eternal life is yours. Exercise your belief and your words to surround yourself with my kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. And the verse they used was Ephesians 3, 20-21 in the NASB. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly beyond all that we ask or think according to the power that works within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. And that was 
put up by Jonas Bolin. And I pray that this has blessed you and that you got something good out of one of them or all of them. All right? I plead the blood of Jesus over this video, over each and every one of us, our devices, and our internet connections. With that, I'll say bye for now. I will talk to you later.